Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more triangle strategy and as we're making our way through our golden route ending um, we are going to be doing all of the other missions. We just did the opposite uh, chapter 8 mission here now we're going to do this opposite chapter 8. So just to give you a clue of where we are in the story um, Saranoa refuses to surrender the prince and at the end of a long and hard battle successfully drives Avlora and her army away but House Wolfort does not escape unscathed either. Um, but we did make it through this entire fight without um, using the fire traps, which means that we are currently on the Golden Route ending. Um, now we are here. House Wolfort has been dealt a heavy blow by the S-Frosty army. Silvio, head of House Telior, arrives at their domain, offering them a much-needed helping hand against the duchy and a promise of Roland's protection. Serenoa and his allies must decide whether to accept or deny the man's offer. In, the, in our first route, we denied... Um, this offer, but we are going to accept it this time. So we are going to accept Silvio's proposal in this one and just note that this has no effect on the golden route ending. So you can make whichever choice you decide in your own playthroughs. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and try to convince people. Um, and uh, once we get a little bit further in, we're probably going to be going to the encampment and uh, doing some stuff there since this is going to be the route that we continue down. Um, let's see. So we need to convince you. I... What do you think of Lord Silvio's proposal, Saranoa? An alliance between the High Houses would lift the people's spirits. Something sorely needed in times like these? I don't think that's surely. strong enough. I have heard tell of High House's loyalty to the crown. An alliance may very well give the people of Glenbrook something to hope for in these dark times. Perhaps my worries were unfounded. Is there something ab about House Tellior that concerns you, Frederica? There is indeed. I cannot help but wonder what Lord Silvio's true intentions are, and if Esfrost has some part to play in all of this. If we refuse Lord Silvio's offer, there is a chance Esfrost will bring him to heal instead. Truly? It would not be unthinkable for Esfrost to use their might to force them into submission, or win them over with the promise of a due reward. I see. Indeed, in that case it would certainly serve us better to ally ourselves with House Telior first. What do you need? I hear that the Telior domain is known for its wine. The more allies one can avail themselves to, the better. That being said, an untrustworthy ally avails no one, would you not agree? We must first and foremost address our supply shortage. House Talior could help us there. Yes, I see. I suppose every reward has its risks. Benedict is doing his best, but there is only so much we can accomplish alone. I do not know what House Teliar's motivations are, but I do know they could supply us with provisions. I see. As long as you are well aware of the risks, I have no arguments. Lord Saranoa. Our soldiers are exhausted after our last battle with Esfrost. I know we need all the help we can get, but even so, I cannot find it in me to trust House Teliar. Pray tell, Lord Saranoa, what do you think of Lord Silvio's offer? I would be grateful for the support, considering those who would aid us now are few and far between. Hmm. Regrettably so, especially after Esfrost's proclamation at the capital. They made it seem like their cause was just. I doubt Hyzant would be willing to lend us a hand, and the nobles in Glenbrook would be of no help to us, as acclimated to peace as they are. I suppose we should be grateful the House Telior offered us their aid. Truth be told, though, I have my reservations about Lord Silvio. Who devised the entire plan. Then... If you don't mind my asking, what makes you so sure we should ally with him? As Frost has placed a bounty on Roland's head, the more allies we have, the safer he would be. As one of the Kingsguard, I share your concerns. However... But I cannot shake the feeling that there is more to House Tellior's offer than meets the eye. Were it House Falk seeking an alliance, I would readily agree. Lord Landroy's loyalty to the crown knows no bounds, after all. Yeah, we know that from seeing the other path. The dude is almost mad with it. <laughs> but Lord Silvio is a different matter entirely. 
If you are concerned for His Highness's safety, we ought to proceed with utmost caution. I have chosen. I am glad we had the chance to speak, Lord Serenella. It has helped clear my thoughts on the matter. Okay, indifferent. That's fine. Lord Serenella. An alliance with House Telior is certainly worth considering. Pray, tell me what swayed you, my lord. No matter the course, we will need greater numbers to see it through. Joining hands with a fellow High House will expand the paths available to us. A fair point. The paths before us, uh, as we are now, are few indeed. Nevertheless, it seems you two harbor suspicions over Lord Silvio's character. And? Do you really think it would be to our advantage to ally ourselves with such a dubious man? I do not intend to put my blind trust in Lord Silvio. As we are now, though, it is an offer we cannot refuse. Ah. A fine resolve, my lord. If we only use those we can trust, we would find ourselves at an impasse before long. A leader must be possessed of a, cap a capacious mind, just as you are. All right, let's do the vote. Um, it's important to note that on this route, the one that I intended to continue forward, um, I did um, every chance I got to, cast to our votes. buy um, upgrade items, the good upgrade items from merchants, I have been doing that, as well as the uh, extra large HP items. Do we accept House Tellior's proposal or go our own way? Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. Just wanted to mention that. You make a convincing argument, my lord. I wholeheartedly agree. I have no qualms with that. Please forgive me. The scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. The way forward is decided. We join forces with House Tellior and defy the Duchy's wrath. Okay, so he's most likely going to betray us, but that's okay. Huzzah! The tidings of our alliance will no doubt bring relief to the aching hearts of our people. Now then, Prince Roland, you and all of House Wolfort simply must come to Talior. We shall. Thank you. You needn't worry about a thing. Leave everything in my capable hands. I must make haste to Talior. I shall throw a grand banquet to commemorate the occasion. Hardly the time for celebrations. <sighs> Is something on your mind, Benedict? No, my lord. Lord Silvio of Tellior offers the solitary House Wolfort an ally, and a place of protection for Roland. Serenoa accepts his offer, and Silvio puts his plan to ensnare his new allies into motion. Because he's a coward. So it looks like we might have another fight um, on the Tellior map. Sleep with one eye open. Yes, indeed. 
aptly named. Uh. No, 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 spare me, I beg you. That's enough, Rufus. You call these men soldiers, Silvio? They haven't got any spine. You can take your frustrations out on House Wolfort. They accepted my gracious offer. I would have preferred they hadn't. I hate dirty jobs. I expect double for this one. And you shall have it. You will strike once the banquet he is finished. He doesn't hate dirty jobs. Only Roland need He'll live. He'll take whatever pays the bills. He's proven that time and time again. Okay, so we can now do this character story. So Giovanna accompanies Huet on a mission, but gets distracted by a peculiar rock. If it came to a battle, this might be the best place for us to make our encampment. What do you think, Giovanna? What is a stone like that doing in a place like this? Are you listening, Giovanna? I'm so sorry, Huet. Uh, did you say something? <sighs> I did, but you were too absorbed in the ground to hear it. Just what are you looking at? This little pebble right here. And why is that? Well, you see, this one's not like the others. It isn't from this area. Which means it was carried here by the river. But there's no river here. Not now there isn't. But a long time ago there was. Long time ago, everything was underwater. Just like any living thing, the mountains, rivers, and forests change over time. That's why there's salt under the ground. And this pebble here is a witness to those transformations. It's difficult to put into words, but that's what this rock is telling me. That there was once a river here. It's so frustrating. What I wouldn't give to pore over those annals in the archives. What wonders I could learn were they not forbidden. So how does knowing the changing of the land help us? Help? Well... <laughs> I suppose my research might not be that helpful in battle, after all. But it is helpful for anyone who wants to know more about this wonderful world we live in. That's why this pebble is more beautiful than the shiniest gem in all the realm. Or at least to me it is. <sighs> Would it be okay for me to take this rock with us, Huet? I feel there's so much more it can tell us. Certainly, if you are so attached to it. But you must promise to concentrate on our mission from now on. I promise, Huet. Uh, could you hold on to this for me, Flugi? Alright, let's make our way into the encampment real quick. Okay, I was able to buy one of these um, earlier on in the playthrough. Um, nothing else for us to really worry about right now, so we do have one person that we can promote. What do you get? Endless speech. Lower the speed of all enemies within range for two turns. Have a chance to silence and put them to sleep for two turns. It's not bad. And you don't get anything. All right, you're next. This shall lead to fortunes upon fortunes. Okay, 
Let's see if you have anything new that we want. So you can see that we bought all of the extra large HP recovery pellets, so we have 23 on hand. So that's pretty cool. Okay, how are we doing on these? Make sure we have some of those on, on hand. Whoa. That could be very good for her, couldn't it? Cost 7,000? No thanks. I don't like that. Okay, that'll put us under the threshold for a lot of people getting their next upgrade because they always require 10, but um, we'll get more of those later, so. for now. So, let's start at Wolfort Harbor. The bandits Travis and Trish discuss rumors of a hefty bounty on a certain someone's head. I don't know what to expect now that Esfrost's taken over Glenbrook. I heard they put a huge bounty on the prince's head. We can make a killing if we catch him. They haven't faked his death yet. I always dreamed of kidnapping royalty. <laughs> but the prince of a crumbling kingdom? Mm. They'd probably kill him if we turned him over. Reward is tempting, though. So we've seen this, so I'm not going to keep going through it. We're going to keep moving. We want to see what's new. With the Crown City captured, Gustadoff proceeds with his plan. Most likely we've seen this one, too, but let's just get in there and check it. I beg you, sir, give me one more chance. I shall not fail again. Ooh, I do want to watch this again, actually. We are already taking measures against House Wolfort. A suitable pawn has showed itself before us. He treats her like garbage here, and this is Though like the seeds of her joining I should Cordelia. Be more wary of my own family than any other. Huh? Which I love. Fox is all that remains of the three high houses. I trust you know what to do, of Laura. Oh, that's right. Lord Landroy Fox is famed for his bow arm. Yep, she said to the destroy him. to fire at your master during the war. Do you think you can best him? Without a doubt. Okay, it wasn't the scene I thought it was. All right, Castle Wolfort. 
Anna brings news to Sarah Noah and the others that sheds new light on their situation. She probably learned of the betrayal, which means we'll be able to plan for it. So, Lord Silvio has been in contact with Esfrost. I heard he made for Whiteholm Castle not long ago. And I received identical reports from several of our spies in Tellior. There is a reason he is known as an opportunist, in which case he has but one objective. Securing Prince Roland to use as leverage with Esfrost. I was also told that House Tellior has hired a man named Rufus as a bodyguard. What do you know about this man? He's a bounty hunter known as Hero's Bane, loyal to none but coin. That said, he's a ruthless fighter. It would be wise not to underestimate him. To think Lord Sylvia would hire such a man. Yeah, he's definitely a tough dude. It means he is serious. We must plan accordingly. Understood. Gather the others. We have much to discuss. So Lord Silvio's proposal was all a ruse to ensnare me? Unfortunately so. He has been in contact with Esfrost. But he must have surmised that simply bending the knee would not suffice, and thought to use you to curry favor with the Archduke. Using the prince as leverage? Has he no shame? We can no longer trust anyone. That dirty scoundrel played us for fools. We made the best choice we could. Had we refused, he would have attacked us outright. Indeed, there are countless soldiers lurking around the premises. Now we can have the upper so hand. So we came prepared for a refusal. I suppose we can expect as much from the famed opportunist. My lord, we must strike before he does. You mean for us to cross blades with Lord Silvio? We have the upper hand now, knowing what awaits. We must do whatever it takes to survive. So the war has already begun. It has. His objective is to capture Prince Roland. Once we are in his territory, he will use the surest measure to secure his highness. In which case, Protect Roland, Sereno and the others decide to play along with Silvio's scheme. There are no other side missions. Or side, uh, what do they call them? Side stories? If you press right and left on the D-pad, it'll automatically take you to them if they exist, so... Welcome, Prince Roland. Lord Noah. A beautiful banquet, just as I promised. I cannot wait to share a glass of Tellior's finest wine with you. Hmm. Likewise, Lord Silvio. We cannot thank you enough for the warm reception. Please, relax, Your Highness. As Lord of House Tellior, I promise to protect you to my last breath. Uh-huh, sure. Thank you. You must be exhausted. Why not have a glass of wine? I am sure you will find it to your liking. Ah, like nectar from the heavens. I should have expected no less of Tellior. Please drink your fill. I insist, everyone. Oh, you want us to drink, do you? I shall. <laughs> they switched out I the have wine. I've never tasted anything quite so delicious. In honor of the fallen. 
Cheers to the glory of the high houses. We mustn't let our guard down. I should take the chance to learn the lay of the land. Occasions for celebration are few and far between in times like these. I hope you are able to enjoy the banquet, even if only for a moment. Lord Silvio still believes we have fallen into his trap. I suggest taking the opportunity to prepare for the inevitable battle ahead. Drink in hand, of course. It truly is a beautiful banquet. One I would have enjoyed were it not a trap. I... I am fine, I assure you. This is only my third glance. Won't you have another Lord Shannon? Convincing, no? <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> I had heard the Tellior Domain was famous for its grapes, but their wine is far sweeter than I ever imagined. Lord Silvio is truly a generous man for sharing the bounty of this of his land with us. It seems the people are unaware of Lord Silvio's plan. This wine is something incredible. You can tell the grapes got all the sunshine they needed to grow up strong and sweet. You know, they say a life without Tellior wine is a life half-lived. They're downright fools to spoil such good drink to their, for their stupid scheme. I have prepared only our finest wines for the occasion. Please drink to your heart's content. The night is still young. Pray, relax, and enjoy the banquet. Yeah, just a minute, I gotta rob this house first. And then I will continue enjoying the banquet. It's not like I'm a lord or anything, I don't... I don't have a bunch of, you know, riches just lying around from being a lord and whatnot. Oh, is there one on the roof? I think there's one on the roof. Get up there. Get up there. Eh. somebody down here. This lake lies within our domain, but it enriches the lives of everyone in Glenbrook. As such, it is my honor to defend it. Ah, so you're Lord, Lord Saranoa of Wolfor. You, um, hold your liquor very well, sir. Why don't we toast to, uh, House Tellior's success? Lake Tellior is the kingdom's water supply, and the dam around it protects Glenbrook from floods. It is the job of House Tellior to watch over the lake and monitor its water levels. We cannot neglect our duties, even in the midst of a banquet. Okay, no shinies over there. It may seem in poor taste to refuse wine on such an occasion, but a hot rider must be ready to take flight at a moment's notice. Or House Telly or to devise such an underhanded plot means they have also fallen on hard times. To think a day would come where one of the high houses turned against another, and under the guise of an alliance, no less. I never thought such a thing possible. What are your thoughts on the matter, my lord? As Lord of House Wolford, I have no intention of running from a fight, but I would prefer to do so without needless bloodshed. I thought you might say that, but I doubt they will be so merciful towards us. Pray, leave such needless sympathy behind, for yourself and Prince Roland both. Thank you, Anna. I shall take your words to heart. I grew up around Lake Tellior. Looking at it always has a way of setting me at ease. Okay, another book to read. We've got to be coming real close to collecting all of them. Hmm. 
Sure, Silvio doesn't look it, but he always yearned to make a name for himself on the battlefield. He'd do anything to hear the people sing his praises like they did House Wolfhorns during the Salt Iron War. I can scarcely imagine what you must be feeling right now, Lord Saranoa. The joyous days between you and your betrothed were cut short by the invasion. Lady Frederica must be suffering as well, but together, Telior and Wolfort can set things right. It appears he doesn't yet know about Lord Silvio's plot. Well, thank you. We must do everything in our power to protect those dear to us. I wish I had someone dear to me like you do, my lord. Alas, I am yet a bachelor. I pray that I someday find a woman like Lady Frederica to call my own. To gain something dear is both a blessing and a curse, for you now have something to lose. There are merits to living a bachelor's life. Basically, I'm not picking these by anything other than switching between morality, utility, and liberty. Um, so, I'm not actually reading the, the, all of them half of the time. Because our choices don't actually matter too much anymore, so... Be that as it may, I'm not but a humble soldier. I must obey Lord Silvio's every whim just to put food on the table. Ah, but I forget myself. Pray, don't let him know I said that. But of course, I hope that fortune finds you, good sir. I heard that the sweet grapes are for eating and the sour ones are for wine. But why would anyone want to drink sour grapes? Ugh. <laughs> You'd find none prouder to be a soldier of Tellior than my husband, but he cannot seem to muster a smile tonight of all nights. I prepared him some warm ginger wine. Hopefully it will raise his spirits. Alright, well, he knows. Salt and fish. Okay, two new books to read. Wine here ain't bad, which is more than I can say for the rest of this place. Hey, okay, third book. Gotta pet the cat. Okay. I think we've explored everything. No shinies down there? Not that I can see. Okay. Hey, we've got five and six here. Up the Norzelia River near the Glenbrook Esfrost border, you will find Tellior Reservoir, a lake of fresh mountain water made from damming up that section of the river. Construction took several long decades, hundreds of workers and thousands of backbreaking hours of labor. But it was worth it, for the dam now protects the Crown City from floods and stores enough clean water to last the kingdom for years to come. Grape orchards have also sprung up on the slope surrounding the reservoir, producing wine that is so famous I need hardly elaborate. Sipping a glass of that wine on a warm summer's eve whilst gazing upon the luminescence of Tellior's famed street lamps reflected in the reservoir's still surface, nothing in the realm might compare to such a pleasure. Okay, in volume six. At the top of the steep, uh, the steep mountain path loom the two towers and a giant gate that gives this Esfrosty stronghold its name, Twins Gate. Situated on the border with Glenbrook, it defends the only passage into the Grand Duchy. For generations, command of Twins Gate has been entrusted to an army general. Until recently, when Minister Svarog, Esfrost was inexplicably given the role. For a giant gate made of iron, it can be opened or shut with surprising speed. I'm not sure of the exact mechanisms that enable this swiftness, as it is a heavily guarded military secret, but according to an Esfrosty soldier with whom I struck up a friendship, they have somehow harnessed the power of the subterranean source of the Norzelia River. Everyone always talks about weaponry when it comes to Esfrosty ironworking, but perhaps attention ought to be paid instead to the mastery of craft that has allowed the duchy to construct such an incredible, precise device so deep in the mountains. That's cool. That was new information about how the gate worked and stuff. Okay, where's our third one? Salt and fish? You could spend a lifetime studying the culinary arts and you still wouldn't come across, uh, come close to learning every method or ingredient out there. Some foods aren't ready until they've been aged a full month. 
Others take years and years to mature to full flavor. But unique as those flavors may be, they aren't necessarily the most delicious just because they take so long to make. What is the most delicious food, you ask? Well, in my humble opinion, it would have to be sweet fish. Fresh caught from a river in early summer, salted and grilled to perfection over an open flame. Nothing can quite compare to the pleasure of enjoying a piping hot meal, quaffing an ice-cold pint as a soft breeze wafts over the water. Perhaps sprinkling a little salt and holding a skewer over a fire doesn't exactly qualify one as a chef, but I don't think I would trust anyone, anyone who sticks their nose up at that simple yet delicious flavor. Honestly, totally agree. You go fishing, if you go camping and you go fishing and just grilling up a fish, adding a little salt and pepper, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, no matter how you slice it. All right, I think we're done with the exploration. Um, I'm gonna do a quick pause here because I need to take my dog outside and I will be back in a moment. I should return, unless Lord Silvio gets suspicious. Tellior's wine truly is superb, but I think you have had more than your fill, Roland. Hardly. I would have another glass of four. <laughs> you have no idea how pleased I am to see you enjoying our domain's wines. But you must be exhausted. Perhaps it is time you retire for the night. I, I think we should, we shall do just that. This way, Roland. I'm drunk, Roland. I'm gonna get kidnapped. Hours after the banquet. So yeah, obviously, Roland, we're fake drunk. Are you sure you're not drunk? <clears throat> Hardly. It was all an act. Convincing, no? So convincing. We cannot let our guard down. The real battle begins now. But of course, I expect they will be here soon. Okay. Now, while this is all going down, I believe that Evlora is dealing with uh, house faults, unfortunately. Word of Silvio's betrayal reaches Lord Landroy's ear. They're coming for you, dude. You better My prepare. Lord, house Telior's betrayal has been confirmed. It appears Lord Silvio plans to launch a surprise attack on House Wolford. This is absolute madness. To think I would see the day three high houses fight each other. The glorious Glenbrook of the past is no longer. The dark days of war are upon us once more. My lord, the Esfrosti army has entered our domain. They demand our surrender. Ready your bows. It is time they witness the true valor of the High Houses. Alright, I think this is where we're gonna end this episode. Let me just double check that there's nothing else I want to do, the, do in the encampment. And uh, otherwise we're gonna end this one and we'll do the battle in the next one. So, I mean, I guess we've kind of done all the upgrades we can for the time being, right? Yeah, we can start building out your luck. Oh, we're only short on money for that one. Okay. We'll get more money soon. Building his luck is not a bad idea. It'll just make him a more potent critical hitter, so... Yeah, why not? Um, all right, so thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode where we uh, take on uh, the Tellior Streets here. Have a good one. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Seventh Son, Ivan K, Len, HLLJ, Knife Namase, Caleb Adkins, and Jordan and Emily Hill. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.